Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Today, we're going to be finishing up our reading of Tablet 3 of Thoth's Emerald Tablets. Um, we are also doing the same breakdown over on Aquarius Rising Africa every Monday. We're a little bit behind on Aquarius Rising Africa, but I did want to go ahead and finish up the third tablet here on this channel. Now, for those who are new to this reading, we're going to be starting on verse uh, 40 today. So I will put down in the description box below the previous recordings of the Emerald Tablet. Uh, tablet 3, as many of you know, Tablet 3 is a little bit more detailed when it comes to uh, Thoth's instructions to us. The first two tablets were more of the who, what, where, when, why, and how of the Emerald Tablets. And so those could be done in one episode. But again, Tablet 3, which is the Keys of Wisdom, they're a little bit more, uh, each verse is very loaded, let's just say. As we say over on Aquarius Rising Africa, it's basically Thoth teaching us how not to be an asshole. So we are going to be starting with verse 40 today. Now, just some FYI with the upcoming week. Normally, I'm pretty scheduled with my videos. Uh, tomorrow, however, tomorrow and Wednesday. So usually on Tuesdays, we have the Hathor material. And then usually on Wednesdays, we've now started the woman with the alabaster jar. Look at that book. Uh, those will not be um, aired this week. Uh, we have a lot of very uh, potent guests that are coming on the channel. We have somebody coming from the Kundalini cult and we have someone coming from the Nexium cult onto this channel. And so those episodes will be aired this week in replace of the half or material and the woman with the alabaster jar. I have learned with YouTube that sometimes it overwhelms your system if you put too many videos up in one day. So I am trying to limit the video release to one a day to really help the al algorithms push the information out. And of course, we want to give respect where respect is due and the two people I have coming on this week have very powerful stories to tell and so I wanted to make sure their stories were heard loud and clear by you guys all right so Hathor material and the woman with the alabaster jar will return next week um, tomorrow in replace of the Hathor material I am going to be releasing an introduction on my own to uh, Kundalini Yoga and Yogi Bhajan and then I'll be talking again to a defector um, and airing that episode on Wednesday. And then we'll go forth with the other videos for the rest of the week. All right, you guys. So we're going to be starting with, again, verse 40 of Tablet 3. For this, for Tablet 3, I am reading from Rebe Rebecca Marina Messenger's translation. For the other tablets, we have worked with Doriel's translation. All right. Tablet 3, verse 40, hidden keys. Meditate on the symbols I give thee. Keys are they, though hidden from men. Thoughts, commentary, in modern English. As you read my original text from the Emerald Tablets 3, relax and take the words into your heart. Yes, there are many keys hidden therein. You would not be attracted to this information if you had not had some type of association with me in a previous incarnation. And again, you guys, oh, I would highly suggest if this is your first time joining us to go back and re-listen to the prior videos on Tablet 3. Um, it's just been really deep information we've talked a lot about the chakra system about the fire of the spirit the bondage of man the enslavement of man through his mental in, you know we enslave ourselves basically we know this um and so and he has spoken a lot about if we re if we refer back to tablet one the very first verse thoth is telling us that he wrote the emerald tablets for us in this timeline not for previous generations but for us, for our generations, that goes back to our amnesia after the fall of Atlantis. And so we all are, are if, we're, if we're drawn to the Emerald Tablets, then there is a very, very good reason why you're drawn to them. But we know the more we read the Emerald Tablets, the more they resonate vibrationally through the cells of our body, through our spiritual DNA. If you decide to let this be easy and do not stress that you do not understand it all yet, light will come upon you. There is no hurry, all is well. You chose to be in the exact place that you are now. You're always where you're supposed to be. And that's another thing we talk about with shadow work, which with Thoth has spoken about that, about diving into the depths of one's soul in order to release the bondage. Again, modern language that's called shadow work. And 
we understand this is important because we are everywhere we're supposed to be. And so many people, like how many people, ourselves included, I've done this, think that happiness will come upon you if you just got this job or if you were just in this relationship or if you had extra money or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, wherever you go, there you are. Wherever you go, there you are. You're meant to be here in this place, but your soul, the bondage of your soul is not going to, to remove itself until you do the work. Because wherever you go, there you are. She Shat contributes her wisdom. You may be curious as to exactly what these keys are. One set of keys we have already given you. Seek after which your heart desires. And you do this one thing, much more will be revealed to you. Are you willing to accept that spiritual growth could be as easy as going within and paying attention to what your heart tells you, following your intuition? It's interesting. I, you know, again, speaking about all these cults, um, I've been doing so much research, so much research into um, Kundalini, the Kundalini cult. I knew a lot about the Kundalini cult before. Um, I even was on YouTube just because of my job outside of YouTube. I was very aware of, of Yogi Bhajan, the criminal Yogi Bhajan and what he was doing. He's no longer living at this point. Um, but also Nexium. I've been really diving deep into Nexium because, again, I have a Nexium survivor coming on the show. And it's interesting because in some of my Nexium studies, I heard a lot of defe defectors saying that they were trained to not trust their intuition, to not trust their gut feeling through gaslighting and manipulation. We also see that again with the Kundalini cult. We see this in all cults. We see it in Scientology, everything. Do not trust your own intuition. And what does the church do? The church tells you not to lean on your own understanding. That's your intuition, which we know the Bible is... Um, the 66 books of the Bible were basically created by King James. Um, hello, you know, Yahshua was never crucified. His name was not Jesus. It was the J sound didn't even exist back then. Yahshua was never crucified. King James created the King James Bible, which tells this satanic story, right? And so in the realms of Satanism, in the realms of, of worshiping the darkness or being on the service to self, the real, you know, selfish, psychopathic path, yeah, you don't want people listening to their intuition because what is your intuition? Your intuition is is God. It's the true God. And so a lot of these a lot of the reasons a lot of ways you can tell a red flag if something is satanic or not is that they're telling you not to listen to your intuition. Good good things will tell you to trust your heart. What do you think? What is your intuition telling you? And that's what they're saying right here. Verse 41 from Tablet 3, using the frequency keys. Reach ever upward, O soul of the morning. Turn thy thoughts upward to light and to life. Find in the keys of the numbers I bring thee, light on the pathway from life unto life. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Keep reaching upwards in your quest for deeper understanding. Bring your thoughts always back to positive vibrations. Use the frequencies of the seven lords that I have given you. Recite uh, recite all of the names daily as you touch each chakra point, which again, we've already been through. So if you missed that episode, I will put it down in the description box below. You will find much light on the path as it becomes easier and easier for you to understand light and truth. That's interesting because we know in like practices of yoga, any type of like true practices of finding consciousness of true self healing, that part of the crux of these practices is to see the truth be able to see the truth through the illusion. Of course, that has a very broad meaning and it also has a very like specific meaning because we're looking for the truth of ourselves. First of all, we, we in our natural form, the life we live is all illusionary. The truth of death is an illusion. The truth of who we are is a, an eternal soul, right? And so when we start to understand that, we start to see the bigger picture as we move up in that vibration. It's interesting. I have somebody that's also going to, I have so many projects in the works right now you guys it's unbelievable but i have somebody that's going to be coming on the channel very soon um who's going to be talking about organic portals and this is a new concept for me i i just learned this myself that not every human being has all seven chakras 
there are younger souls that ha do not have their upper chakras. They are called organic portals, OPs. Uh, people who do not have their upper chakras do not have a higher self. Only people who have full chakras have an overlord or a higher self. There are also people who, who don't have their upper chakras don't have a soul contract either. They're like toddlers kind of toddling around the world, learning things before they actually make commitments. And one of the things that the research um, has shown is that uh, a sign of an or organic portal is one who continually mimics someone else in spirituality. It's constantly mimicking one person and then switching to another person and mimicking them because they don't have their upper chakras, right? So they're having to mimic because they don't have their own, their own, they haven't grown that far yet in their soul. So just something very interesting, kind of off topic, but we will be looking more into that more on my channel. I have a surprise guest, a mystery guest that will probably remain anonymous that was going to come on and talk about that. All right. She shat contributes her wisdom. As a woman, I find these exercises to be greatly beneficial for humans of every gender. You all have an energy system, a chakra system that can benefit from the vibrations created by chanting the names of the seven lords. It is easy to, to remember as Utana starts the crown chakra and opens you to the spiritual wisdom. Kutaris activates the pineal gland. This increases your inner vision and ability to receive and transmute psychic information. Chatel activates the throat chakra, encouraging you to speak up and speak out. Powerful Guiana vibrates the heart and opens you to more love, understanding, and courage to follow your heart's desire. Her tall coincides with the solar plexus and the seat of your will and the powerful gut feeling. Uh, Synvetta stimulates the sexual chakra and all the good feelings that are generated there. Ardal brings it all together by addressing your primal needs, primal roots, thus stimulating hunger more uh, for more than mere survival. You will find your life much more in harmony with what you want as you cultivate the habit of daily balance. If spiritual growth is your quest, this is a very great key to assist you. In all your desires for spiritual growth, do not forget the joys of being human. I like that, right? We're supposed to also enjoy life, right? It's like Alan Watts. It's my favorite thing Alan Watts ever said. If you ever study any of Alan Watts' books, he was fabulous. Um, somebody asked Alan Watts once, what's the point of life, right? That's the big question we all ask. What's the point of life? Why are we here? And Alan Watts said, it's simple. The point of life is to be alive. It's to be alive. I shared a short on my channel a few weeks ago of Marnie Alton talking about that, the chaos, the beautiful chaos that everything you're going through is here for your growth in your life, the pain, the joy. As most of you know, I just turned 40 and I have a really hard time with age. I, I don't know why I just have anxiety around my birthday. And it's probably has a lot to do with the fact that I have definitely taken a path that's not normal for my socioeconomic background. I've definitely taken my own, my paved my own way in this life. And I was thinking about that uh, on my yoga mat the other morning, like stressing about turning 40. And I kind of was doing a review of, of the past 10 years, the past decade and everything that has happened to me in the last 10 years the multiple trips back and forth to India, the broken bones, the bloody nose, the bruises, the highs, the joy, the excitement, the lows, the heartbreak, going through lockdown, losing my shala, opening up my YouTube channel. I wouldn't trade any of that for the world because all of that was so sensationally life. It was sensationally life. It's why we're here in human form. It's, it's to be alive. It's to have these experiences that push and pull us through our body, through the, the, the machine of our body, the Shakti of the soul. It's not to be the best account or to have the most money in the, your checking account when you die. It's the point is just to actually be alive. And I have been alive for 40 years. I have been alive. And so what a great mantra to live by going into our new timeline or whatever is happening to us in this age of Aquarius. This idea of just being alive. All right. Verse 42. The flower is the light. The flower of light is life. Seek ye with wisdom. Turn thy thoughts inward. Close not thy mind to the flower of light. We've talked about the actual flower of light. I'll put a picture of it here in this. And then when I edit this video, I'll put a picture up of it. 
um, somebody said, you know, we, we know from the first tablet that a lot of the technologies from Atlantis are still hidden under the earth for, for a new generation for us. And the flower of light and the flower of life is regeneration. It's being able to regenerate. It's like a med bed, you know, but again, I'm going to say med beds are not going to work unless you actually work for yourself. If you think you're just going to get in a med bed and all your problems are going to be fixed, you got another thing coming. That's not how this works. You have to do your own work first. All right. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Take your time and use your inner wisdom. Yep. Do your own work. Look within for the guidance that you already have within you. Keep your heart and mind open to the flower of light. She shat contributes her wisdom. We have spoken often of the power within your heart. The power of light refers to the divine flame that is in every being. Some refer to this flame as the flame of, of the Holy Spirit. Without this flame, by whatever name you desire to call it, there is no life. When the sperm hits the egg, there is a spark of light. That's you. That's your soul. The flame animates all life from plant to animal to human. When you see a dead body of any species, you can tell right away there is no animating spirit within. Be wise, be still, and listen. Then when it is time for your inspired action, you will know what to do. Verse 43, how to manifest your heart's desire. Place in thy body a thought form picture. Think of the numbers that lead thee to life. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Picture in your mind what it is that you desire. Focus also on how each energy center or chakra has a part in delivering that to you. The numbers coincide with the lords of frequency. Everything is frequency. All can be reached in your quest for more life. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Your body has its own wisdom. It knows what it's best for, and it knows what it's best to avoid. As you hold a firm picture of that which you desire and really feel it in your body, so shall it more easily be manifested for you. Tablet 3, verse 44, Seeking Wisdom. Clear is the pathway to he who has wisdom. Open the door to the kingdom of light. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. As you take the time to study these teachings, you will become wiser. This will keep you from acting hastily and making many mistakes. Wisdom comes from study. However, wisdom also comes from life experience. Save time and learn from others who have gone before you. What's the point of being in, of, of being here, of life, is to be alive, is to have experiences. You know, there's a famous Patavi Joyce quote that says, practice all is coming. Well, we could, on, the, on a very base level, we can say, yes, the more you practice, practice makes perfect. But literally what Guruji meant by that was practice all is coming. Everything's coming for you. Joy, sorrow, sadness, excitement. Death, birth, renewal, regeneration, it's all coming. So keep practicing. Everything you're supposed to experience in life to be alive is coming. Shishat contributes her wisdom. There have been many wonderful teachers who have gone before you. All have made mistakes in using wisdom. Let not your heart be discouraged as you look upon the mistakes which you have made. Place light on the mistakes and thank them for teaching you. Easy is the path to those who pay attention, judge not, and forgive often. Yes, we all make mistakes. That is definitely, and it's through our mistakes that we actually learn. You know, I don't learn from the things I do right. I learn from the things that I do wrong. Verse 45 of Tablet 3. Your powerful flame is awareness. Pour forth thy flame as a son of the morning. Shut out the darkness and live in the day. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. There is a flame within your being that can never be quenched. You have far more power than you know. Shut out those dark energies who would try to corrupt the flame of your heart. Live in the light by choosing the good in everything. That's why I prefer to call us, not, we're not truthers, we're seekers. Because you're never done. You're never fully at the truth. You're always seeking. There's always more information to quench that hunger. And I think most people on this channel, like me, always want to know more. Where? What are we? What is God? What are? Why are we here? That's a seeker, right? That's a seeker. Shishat contributes her wisdom. A good way to know that you are basking in the light is to check in with your thoughts and conversations. Do you recognize when you are in judgment of others? It is simple to turn this around. 
Awareness is key. Do your thoughts feel uplifting to you? If not, what could make them so? Be aware that you are the master of your own being, of your own growth. You do have the power to choose light. Verse 46 from Tablet 3, follow the path of thought. Take thee, O man, as part of thy being. The seven who are, but are not as they seem. Opened, O man, have I my wisdom. Follow the path in the way that I have led. Thoughts commentary in modern English. Take the power and assistance which these seven lords of frequency are offering you. So your chakras, the information your chakras are offering you. Follow this guidance. Activate your own chakras with the power of these sound frequencies and you shall see great achievements in your soul. Follow this path and more shall be revealed to you. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Remember that Goyana is the center connecting point of all the chakras. The heart is eager to know all that will cause you growth. The seven are surely not as they seem, for they seem to be such a mystery, did they not? Yet looking at the assistance and their frequencies can give your body's entire energy system. It's a precious treasure. The frequency of Lord Goyana sends energy upwards to the throat, third eye and crown, beating in rhythm to your heart's desire if you are paying attention to them. Goyana sends energy downward to the solar plexus, sexual and root chakra. Focus on the heart chakra is a blessing to your entire being. Verse 47 of Tablet 3, the light path to true wisdom. Master of wisdom, son of the morning, light and life to the children of men. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. We have given you a light to follow. Your chakra system holds many secrets. You shall become masters of wisdom. You shall be as light unto, unto the children of men. Hold fast to your heart's calling. Always turn your thoughts back to the light. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Spend time in stillness. Hold thoughts of fulfilling your heart's desire. When dark thoughts would overtake you, turn to your divinity within. Call upon the divine figures whom you look up to when you feel that you need extra guidance or protection. Be it the Christ, Lakshmi, Huan Yen, Zeus, Allah, or any other being of light. All desire to be service to humanity or they would not be, be a being of light. There is one source, yet from that one source flow multiple streams of helping energies. Your light among men is surely found in that great fountain of light within your heart. Do not diminish the power which you already have to be a light among men. Do as your heart guides you, and it shall be so. And that ends the third tablet of the Keys of Wisdom. How did you guys like that? Of course, we're still working on the third tablet over on Aquarius Rising Africa. But then after the third, we move to the fourth tablet. And I am looking at this stuff with you guys for the first time. So I don't even know what to expect with the fourth tablet. Um, I will say, as I said before, if you get... Rebecca Marina Messenger's book. Um, she does have some like journaling sections you can do where you can turn this book into almost like a shadow work journal. Um, on chapter 48, which is the next chapter, I think this is interesting. She has preparations for channeling. She's actually going to teach you how to channel for yourself. All right. Um, and so if this is something that you want to learn for yourself. Um, I would highly suggest getting this book. Again, most of the tablets we're reading from Doriel's translation, but I happen to have this book. This was actually the first book I ever bought on the Emerald Tablets before I actually knew what the Emerald Tablets were. And I thoroughly enjoyed her translation as well. I, I like Doriel, Doriel's as well, but I really like Rebecca Marina Messenger's translations because she adds the feminine touch to it. And she also gives the modern commentary. And so I will put a link to this down in the description box below. Let me know what you guys thought of the third tablet and I will talk to you all soon.